Hello, and welcome back to Psycholonials. I am one week behind because I was too depressed. But that's fine. We're back. We're gonna read. Chapter 4. Interlude 2. Uh oh. Looks like the authorities are finally closing in. You knew this was coming, right? You've been sloppy, Jen. You set up a shoddy alibi, pinned the shit on the innocent simp for some reason, and started babbling to a first responder about the witness protection program for God's sake. Lol, we're not exactly dealing with a master criminal here, but I will say this much. We are dealing with a criminal who's got guts. And wherever there exist people with guts, there exist people who stand a chance. It took guts to dump that car in the sound. It took guts to play it cool and start a kick-ass media empire out of the house of a highly visible internet celebrity. It'll take even more guts to manage a brand with a million followers while you're a wanted felon making national headlines. So maybe it's time to put those guts to use. Maybe you're ready to make a real choice. Could always delete your account and pretend this never happened. That'd probably save you a ton of trouble. Or you could charge full steam ahead. Fuck the news, fuck the haters, fuck the police. There isn't a force in heaven or earth that could slow your brand down now. So what'll it be, Jen? Is this a fake choice? That's what I thought. Haha, <laughs> whoops, okay, this is my fault. I knew damn well this wouldn't work. If I'm being totally honest, I just wanted to say hello again. To remind you I exist. To remind you what the stakes are. The facts have remained unchanged, though. The ability to make meaningful choices in this story are still only allowed to be unlocked by a true successor. And that still ain't you. But it does look like you're making some progress, so don't give up hope just yet. I'll check back on you soon enough. Just keep doing whatever it is you're doing. And I think we both know what that's gonna be, lol. Because you're a fighter, Jen. That's what I love about you. Hmm. Chapter 4, A Symbol of Strength Two weeks later Damn As an outlaw in the national spotlight, you've had to adapt your lifestyle over the past couple weeks you can only assume the police have been keeping an eye on Abby's house. Rather than trap yourself in your studio around the clock, you've worked out a means of getting outside while staying under the radar. You slip out the back and head toward the beach. Abby was kind enough to provide you with her most expensive vehicle, the 2017 Bentley Continental, parked about five minutes down the coast. It's the least she could do, you think, given the life of austerity you've been otherwise forced to live as a fugitive. <laughs> Sports. Dude, I love the sweet bro and Hella Jeff inspired shades. Dude, you're so cool. Soon enough. You'll need some automotive mobility for practical purposes. 
But for now, it's good to just get out of the house and drive so you can think. So much has happened in the past couple weeks, it's just hard to keep track of it all. But you guess that's just life now. A little time alone behind the wheel of a luxury vehicle should help you organize your thoughts. Since you relaunched your brand, never in your wildest dreams did you imagine having more followers than Abby, let alone leapfrogging over her so quickly. Her following has been ticking up steadily too, but it's nothing compared to the rate of your fandom's growth. 413 posts, 612 million followers, and one following. Alright. <laughs> You were the star of the circus, and now even Abby's fan base has come to admit she's become a close orbiting satellite to your brand, rather than the other way around as it once was. And also, you know Z took this screenshot of their own fucking- You know this is a screenshot on their fucking <laughs> phone, like when that milestone quote-unquote happened, alright. Something about the chaotic energy of the jub- Wait, did I read? Yeah, 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 sorry. Something about the chaotic energy of the jubilate craze, combined with the drama of the dead cop scandal, has resulted in transforming your social media presence into phenomenal status. The media has become obsessed. It's fascinating to many for its unusual and incendiary ideological focus and just as captivating to others for resembling a slow-motion train wreck. There is a sense among your millions of new followers that the more sensational, criminal elements surrounding the daily drama of your brand will only get worse, and people are here for it. You adamantly deny the accusations, of course, and expertly weave these denunciations into your performance to magnify the attention to your accounts. Since the natural targets of your screeds are the corrupt government, corporations, and the police forces around the nation which only serve to protect their power and wealth, it's been a pretty easy it's been pretty easy to conjure a narrative framing these accusations as an attempt by powerful forces to silence you. By the looks of it, most of your followers are willing to believe your denunciations, and not many of them were big fans of law enforcement to begin with anyway. It's just more fuel for your showmanship, a story that's easy to sell to a hungry crowd. Almost as easy to sell as Abby's parents have been on your recent prankses efforts. On that front, it's been like shooting fish in a barrel. Abby has her dad deeply concerned about market volatility and selling off huge amounts of stock to buy Bitcoin, which he then enthusiastically funnels into your spoof wallet. You and Percy have been working her mom, who's been doing the same thing with a totally separate spoof wallet unbeknownst to her husband in anticipation of carving out a portion of their assets which she can make off with after the imminent divorce. Every time they make new deposits, you're sure to quickly reroute those funds to offshore accounts under your control. Meanwhile, you maintain fake backend sites for them to look at, which makes it appear their deposits are still secure. They're both so caught up in the process, it hasn't even occurred to them to wonder if they're being robbed. Percy's been an invaluable accessory to the ruse. He now needs minimal instruction to play the role of Abby's mom's lover. They engage racy photos and sext messages frequently between their phone calls. You've had a lot of fun photoshopping the head of the man she believes she's talking you onto body shots sourced from amateur porn. You get some steady, some pretty steamy pics back from her in return, but you spare Abby the trauma of sharing those with her. Percy has made plans to come to the island tomorrow to help out with some new projects you're working on. Having another set of hands will be helpful as you move into more ambitious phases of your brand's development, especially when you're trying to keep a low profile. Of course, it's nagging at you that the police have his photo. You still haven't told him. Yeah... What the fuck? <laughs> you 
you just can't seem to find the right moment. It would be such a downer having to explain something like that when you're both having such a good time swindling billionaires. Oh my god. you get around to it someday. <laughs> Besides, he knows perfectly well you're connected to a murder in the news, and now he must know how deeply implicated he is in a fraud scheme as well. No matter what you have or haven't told him, he has to understand the truth. There's no going back. For old time's sake, you head down the street of your apartment. You haven't seen that place in weeks, not since the night this all began. No squad cars anywhere. Not surprising since they're probably, they've probably taken all the evidence they need from your place already. You suppose that means there's no reason to even try entering anymore. Yeah, that's the thing, is if Z was working on some sort of illegal shit and that's all been seized by the police, then like, I guess that might be factoring into them not turning themselves in, I guess. And also just not wanting to be pu punished for fucking murdering someone. I don't know. All your stuff, your beloved po posters, liquor bottles, and nasty macaroni pots, it's all probably in an evidence room somewhere by now. You never liked the place much, but it's still sad to think that chapter of your life is over for good. You head back to the remote parking spot Abby found for you and begin your shoreline trek back to your hideout. You're in no hurry. The scenic walk gives you more time to think about the big plans you have brewing and the preposterous amount of newfound financial flexibility you'll have to put them into motion. If only Percy knew what you really had in store for him on this island, Abby too for that matter, but it's better to reveal your more ambitious ideas to people in smaller doses. Oh. Oh no. Well, that was wacky. Later. How much did they deposit today? Your dad put in around 350 million. Your mom only about 100 million. <laughs> but that's actually a lot for her. The biggest deposit she's made yet. Wow. I can't believe how casual these people peel off another hundred million bucks like it's a ten dollar bill. Money seems so abstract and meaningless to them. No wonder this is turning out to be easy. I'm not sure I would call it easy. I feel depraved pretending to talk like a Republican. <laughs> Saying some of the shit I've said has made me feel so much dirtier than if all we were doing was stealing money. At least your side of the operation is more fun. I'm hardly even doing anything anymore. Percy's been doing most of it lately. He's coaching, he's coaching her very well on working their assets. He's turning out to be a pretty good con artist. Well, that's only because you are, and you're the one coaching him. I don't know, I've barely talked to these people at all, except for initially seducing your mom in a shitty email chain. You're the one who somehow turned your dad into a slobbering crypto junkie. Dude literally believes our entire economic system is on the brink of collapse and Bitcoin is the only safe haven now. It's true, he's really obsessed with this project now. To be fair, our entire economic system actually is on the verge of collapse, but whatever. He won't even be affected by the collapse because all his money will be gone by then. 
Haha, <laughs> yeah. How much do we have now? Almost 5 billion. Fuck, that is so much. It's certainly nothing to sneeze at. And you're absolutely sure it's like, ours? Yes. Except for what they deposited today, none of the money is still in my spoof wallets. I resell the coins quickly and spread it all out a across a bunch of foreign accounts. What, you actually just opened up a bunch of Swiss accounts or some shit? Like in the movies? Lol, well, they're not mine exactly, they're all in your name. It's less suspicious that way since, you know, you're actually a rich person and I'm a fucking wanted felon. Well, when you look at it that way, I guess this is all really just an elaborate early inheritance scheme. <laughs> yeah. So, they can't see that you're just sucking the bitcoins out right after they put them in? No, they only see what I want them to. The wallets make it look like the coins are still there. They'll only run into a problem if they try to sell them. And I don't see that happening soon. Your folks are awfully bullish on crypto suddenly. When you say their money is all going to be gone, are you really going to try to get all of it? That would be ideal, but we're going to hit a wall soon. I don't think even your dad is dumb enough to convert his entire fortune into Bitcoin. And Percy tells me it sounds like the remaining assets are going to be a lot harder to move. Much less liquidity than whatever they've been trading to buy the coins we've got so far. He must be in really deep with my mom to find out anything like that. Oh yeah he is. I mean we both are. We tag team this. I listen in on his calls <laughs> with her sometimes, text him notes on where to steer the conversation. God. I'm also in charge of supplying the thirst trap shots. What? Abs, this courtship is at a whole nother, nother level now. Percy's putting on quite a show with his very masculine Republican sounding voice. Naturally, there's going to be some sexting too. Like, with actual photos. Percy's sending my mom nudes? Uh, no. I just photoshopped them. It's easy to find face shots of this real dude she thinks she's talking to. I just paste them on top of, like, amateur porn. Lamau. And boy, does she reciprocate. I must say, Abby, your mother is one hot bitch. Oh, Jesus. I'm not sure I want to see any of this shit. Oh, I wasn't planning on sharing my gallery of your slutty mom shots, don't worry. It's my private collection. OMG, you mischievous whore. Anyway, I can see where you get it from. Fucking yowza. <laughs> Lol, yes, she's quite attractive. I mean, she was a trophy wife once upon a time. I almost feel sorry for her developing sort of kinship with her, actually. Why? Because we both want to rip off your dad. It just so happens I'm the only one actually succeeding. Ha <laughs> ha Whatever. She can take solace in the fact that her daughter turned out to be a billion times the gold digger than she ever was. That's true. It turns out I'm quite rich. And I had to do less, even less, to get my shady funds than my criminal dad did. Now all I need is my own trophy wife. Ow. Hey now, let's be clear on who would be whose trophy wife. If anything, you'd be mine since I have way more clout now. Uh, excuse me, Z, but didn't I just hear you say all these bank accounts are in my name? Damn, you're right. Uh, I guess I don't know whose fucking money this really is. Well, according to the tenants of Pranksis, nobody really owns it. It's all fake shit, just like gender and all the other stuff you like to rant about. Money is just little numbers on computers mostly, moving around all the time, but not really doing the world much good. So we might as well move it our way and make some better things happen. I can't believe how thoroughly I've converted you to jubilatism. And I thought your parents were supposed to be the easy marks falling for all this Bitcoin shit. But you make them look like stone-faced skeptics. Lol, well I have to keep sucking up to your whole clown religion if I want to be your trophy wife someday. How else am I going to cash in on my own money? 
Oh, that's extremely fair. Carry on with your ass kissing then. If you haven't even heard the good shit, or you haven't even heard the good shit yet, what's the good shit? Like advanced lessons in pranksis. If you like what we've already been doing, the advanced shit would knock your socks off. Oh lord. These are the types of methods we'll need to start employing if we want to get the rest of their money. Plus a lot more from other sources. They aren't exactly the only billionaires in the world you know. Unbelievable, you got 5 billion in the bank and you just want to keep hustling? Hell yeah. Oh my god, it's breaking bad. We're on a mission here, why slow down? I just can't even imagine what you're planning on doing with all this money. You can't even show your face in public because you're a cop killer. I don't- I feel like if fucking Z- If- Jen fucking watched Breaking Bad. She, maybe she already knows where it's going. <laughs> Anyways, hold that thought. Anyways. Yeah, you can't even show your face in public because you're a cop killer. Well, I mean, with their following, being a cop killer might be the thing that protects them in public. I don't know. Doesn't matter if you can't imagine it, I can. It just all feeds into more pranks. More money, more publicity, more financial influence and leverage around the world, more pranks. Alright, but what if we slowed it down a bit and like just tried to enjoy this more? I feel like I keep coming back to that. This was supposed to be fun. It is fun. Pranks is fun. It it is its own reward. You think, uh, you know why people play pranks? Cause that shit's fun. Okay, I, yeah, I can't argue with that. But it's also very risky, high stakes stuff. And I don't know, there's other stuff to think about. Like what? Well, I have ideas too. Oh, do you now? Since when? Since always, I am full of ideas. Not sure I like hearing this. I'm not getting myself a trophy wife so she can do a bunch of thinking. Alright. Lol, fuck you. I'm not going to be your trophy wife. Either you're going to be mine or the marriage is off. Holy shit, yes ma'am. So tell me your huge brain ideas. When you're done with my dick flattening, I mean. I've been thinking a lot about your clown gender stuff. Yeah? Yes, it all sounds so silly at first, but it's kind of a brain worm. I've been considering where I fit on the triangle. And what have you decided? Well, I don't know if anything fully speaks to me yet. And I just wonder if some adjustments could be made to the system. Adjustments? Yeah, I mean, since it's kind of a silly system that you just pulled out of your ass anyway. Abby, I did not pull this out of my ass. It is extremely serious. Oh sure, saying you identify as clown gendered is the most serious thing in the world. Who could argue with that? You know what I mean. Yeah, I know you believe in the ideas, I'm just saying. Since you're so creative and all, and extra serious about gender philosophy, maybe you could like do something with horse gender. Horse gender? Yeah, why not? Abby, that is patently absurd. 
No, it's not. Not any more absurd than clown gender. But it doesn't have to be, if you actually think about it and make it work. Hmm. Come on, can't you do it for me? I think you just want to identify as horse gender no matter what logic I come up with. So what if I do? Isn't that my right? Well, yeah, it is. Maybe you have a good point. God damn it. I can't believe I'm letting you strong arm me into revising my manifesto extemporaneously. Nobody would even know you're revising it. You could just be releasing a new chapter, elaborating on it. Kind of like how you're still going to unveil advanced pranks or whatever. That's true. Alright, give me a minute. Let me sketch some ideas. You and Abby head right back to the gender drawing board. She's giving you an interesting challenge. Handed you an oddly shaped shoe, if you will. And it's your job to make it fit. After playing with your continuum a bit, you decide to stay with the pyramid format. You don't want to revolutionize your system too much since everyone's already acclimated to the logic of a pyramid. Your goal is to enrich everyone's understanding of gender, not vex them with increasingly convoluted nonsense. Hmm. After a couple of hours, you think you have something workable here. That fucking transition after you say that. Alright. <laughs> First of all. <laughs> no. You and Abby are too excited about it <laughs> to sit on it though. You decide to improvise a live stream right now to inform everyone of your astounding new breakthroughs. I'm sure you'll all be thrilled to hear I've made some astounding new breakthroughs on the Jubilate philosophy of gender. I just have two words to say. Horse gender. As you can see, the pyramid-shaped continuum remains intact, but the y-axis has been expanded to go even lower, which means that while horizontally we have the conventional male-female gender spectrum, Vertically, we now also have the clown horse gender spectrum. <laughs> so horses are the anti-clown, in other words? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Both axes are, of course, a fluid spectrum, and you can position yourself anywhere on this continuum that feels true to your experience. So what's horse gender? Glad you asked. It represents the extreme counterpoint to clown gender where clown gender embodies a whimsical, absolute lack of identification with the conventional gender spectrum, or even the entire idea of gender. Horse gender is the total opposite. It means extreme identification with any given gender on the horizontal axis. <laughs> oh my god, it's like super straight. It's like super gender, oh my god. Uh, and now I'm thinking of the fucking super capitalism meme. Uh, <laughs> the internet makes my brain hurt. <laughs> so, if you're a horse gendered male, it means you feel extremely male. Or if you're a horse gendered woman, you're like, God damn, I'm a fucking woman. I guess an example example of this would be like turfs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, don't take that too literally. I don't want to taint horse gender for everybody right out the gate. You could be hella woman identified without being weird and turfy about it, and that would still be a totally valid horse gender feeling. Like my friend Abby, she's a proud horsewoman. Ugh. <laughs> so I think you get the idea. <laughs> Move up the scale toward clown. You hardly give a fuck. You're a wild card untethered from this maddening social construct. Move down towards horse and you're digging in. Where clown is a symbol of whimsy, horse is a symbol of strength. Like, hell yeah, I'm this fucking gender and that's cool. And there's nothing wrong with that? The system accounts for it. All points on this continuum are equally valid. 
And notice in the middle of the scale vertically, between horse and clown, that's just the average gendered spectrum. That's where you are if you don't feel super strong or weak or you identify either way. And if that's you, also fucking valid. Wonderful! So having said that, allow me to illustrate some examples of putting this into practice as I see it. <laughs> Alright, sorry. I'm just like touching my face because I'm like trying to feel like if what I'm reading is a real thing. It's not. It's fiction. But if it's like a, a fiction of... I don't... <laughs> Look at this bullshit! <laughs> uh... <sighs> now, I don't claim to speak for these people. You should try to see them as, like, my headcanons. I guess they come forward <laughs> and set the record straight if they want. Haha. -ha. Post, I'm looking at you. Just joking, man. You don't gotta. But you can. Um, do you guys remember when fucking Dante Bosco read Homestuck? <laughs> uh... Um, what else is going on with this shit? Let's see. Kinda think the Obama placement is a no-brainer. JK Rowling too. Now that's a horse-gendered woman if there ever was one. Like, I hate that I understand exactly what this means is what I'm saying. Like, oh my god. Hey, what do you want from me? She gets up to all this fucking turfy shit. Seems to me, if she wants to park herself in a barn and make a big turfy bed made out of like hay or whatever and wacky gender essentialism, then she's more than welcome to do that. It just lands her on the horsewoman point of the triangle, Saul I'm saying. Go on and let her whinny, or don't drag her to the glue factory if you really must. I am not here to police your online activism. I am only here to report on all of the good shit when it comes to my kick-ass gender pyramid. The point is, all of this is accounted for in the diagram. Know this and be free. Alright. Is that enough of fucking that yet? You bet it is. Later. You're astral projecting again. Screenshot that. That? Hello? What <laughs> is that? <sighs> You've been doing very well.
Uh oh. Next day. You check your phone and notice the date happens to be 20th of May, exactly one month since the night you went on that fateful drive with your manifesto. Today, Percy is scheduled to arrive so he can assist with new projects. You wait for his ferry from inside the Bentley, parked at a distance to stay out of sight. You haven't been here since the night you disposed of the squad car. You find yourself glancing in that direction now and then. You have no idea if they dredged the car out of the water yet, or if they even figured out that's where it ended up. That incriminating dashboard camera footage was probably completely wiped out after being submerged in salt water for weeks. You guess you're relieved about that, but then with the amount of hysteria there is about this case in the media, that footage hardly seems to matter anymore. You're who they're looking for, and nothing can change that. I mean, the footage would have the fucking... Manifesto... That's like the trump card here, right? But like, will that- Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if that'll work. All you can really do now is make sure you don't get caught. I needed a sippy, my mouth was dry. Oh, we better save before we get caught. Gonna have to start saving over the intro once again. There's Percy. He radiates the nervous energy of an eager simp. He looks around for you, but of course you won't be getting out of the car. You'll just text him to come find you. Oh shit. Yeah, did you think this would work, dude? Shit, shit, shit. The cops have been waiting for Percy to arrive before making their move. Were they tracking him from the mainland too? How did they figure out who he was? Maybe they ran some facial recognition software on the photo you sent and something finally turned up in their system. Or maybe he had to show his ID to get on the boat. <laughs> Whatever the case, this won't do it all. If they take him into custody, interrogate him, and take his phone, this is all over. They'll close in on you and Abby in no time. You need to deal with this now. Uh-huh. Fucking crazy bitch. Fuck. Holy shit. Yep.
Don't stand there with your phone, dude. Oh god, how many- Oh, Jesus fucking- This dude's gonna get shot, too. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> you need to get off the street fast. Your car is totaled and Abby's house is too far away. You look around for shelter, any place at all that could get you out of broad daylight for a little while. You just remember the restaurant you used to work at is down the street. Hopefully the owner still has it shut down due to the pandemic. That would be an ideal hideout for the rest of the day while this blows over. Ugh. You head down the alley to the back entrance. There's a good chance it's locked, but that shouldn't be a problem. It's dark inside. All the tables and chairs are put away. Since... Oh, looks like no one's set foot inside here since the last day you waited tables. Perfect. Well, perfect for hiding, but in most other ways far from perfect. This is a fucking mess. There's no drowning the evidence for what you just did this time. You murdered two cops out in the open, and the dashboard camera surely caught it this time. There were a few eyewitnesses as well. You'll be hearing about this on the news before the end of the day, no question. Maybe within the hour. Ugh. You revisit your memories of working at this restaurant with a mysterious pang of nostalgia. You used to hate this place. You resented the tourists, the bad tips, the shitty boss. But seeing it empty and dark like this, it reminds you that things may never return to the way they once were. They certainly won't for you after what you just did. Ugh. You nearly forgot about Percy. Oh no. He stands there shaking, terrified, still cuffed. You just realized he probably assumes he was just arrested for his involvement with Bitcoin fraud. Maybe you have some explaining to do. Holy shit. Hey, Percy. Are you okay? Oh, man, you're bleeding. Damn. Wait. <laughs> Lol, no. That's just my blood. I guess I fucked myself up in the crash. Who thought one of my bullets got you? Uh. Listen, there's something I need to confess you know how I've been saying all those cop killing accusations were lies? Well, actually, I did it. I killed the cop in self defense and covered it up. Ha 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 ha. I mean, maybe that's not the stunning news. I think it is considering, like, uh, I just shot two cops in front of you to bust you out of custody. Well, now. Uh, okay, that's not actually what I wanted to confess. The reason they arrested you is. is Man, why is it so hard to admit? The cops got your picture because I, I, I roped you into all this Bitcoin scam shit. <laughs> That's what it was. It's all my fault. I got you into this mess. I suckered you into our pranks racket. And now you're a wanted felon just like me. In my defense, I was just having too much fun scamming those rich boomers with you. You're a natural at it. And I was on such a roll making fake amateur nudes and photoshop and shit. Maybe this sounds selfish of me, but I wouldn't change a thing. Even though it got you in trouble with the law, well, it got both of us in trouble. And I know how you must be feeling. I've been feeling it for weeks. That sense that your life is never going to be the same again. 
that you'll always be looking over your shoulder, that the name Percy is forever going to be associated with these crimes, and there's nothing left to do but keep fighting until the threat is fully destroyed. But here's the good news! No matter how much the media drags the name Percy through the mud, from now on we both know there is no Percy anymore. Percy died today. You are no longer a humble human simp. You are a jubilate now and forever. You are Purse. Oh God. That's so fucked up. And now they're going to Abby's house too. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my like oh my god. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> like, oh my god. That's crazy. Alright. I'm going to now proceed to record the next episode as well. So, I will see you in a moment. Or not. Whatever you choose. Have a good one. <laughs>